3D platformers are set to make a big comeback in 2017, with the long-awaited Head in Time and the highly anticipated ukulele. The dormant genre will get a chance to be back in the spotlight, and personally, I'd like to see that attention last longer than just these two titles. Modernizing a genre that hasn't been relevant in some time can be quite an undertaking. One genre that managed to have a successful, if rocky, comeback was the 2D platformer, with games like Spelunky, Super Meat Boy, and even Nintendo going back to the roots of its beloved mascot with the new Super Mario Bros. series. The exception of Mario aside, those games aim to bring 2D platformers back with a new twist in gameplay, bucking old trends while still keeping the retro aesthetic alive with their art styles, music, etc. Shortly after people had faith in 2D platformers again, there was an oversaturation of the genre. Small indies pumping out quick, cheap pixel platformers to try and bank on the next nostalgia trip from consumers. While I applaud anyone for getting into game development in the first place, it can be a bit tiring to see the same thing done over and over again. Of course, there will always be diamonds in the rough. We were treated to many creative titles that looked outside the source material of side-scrolling classics to bring fresh elements, additions, and ideas. Every genre sees oversaturation and cheap clones to some extent, but given the easy nature of development, 2D platformers suffered as a result. So what does this mean for the future of 3D platformers? I don't think we'll see an oversaturation to the same levels that we did with its younger 2D sibling, given it's a much more complex type of game to develop, with vast and expansive worlds to explore, a lot of time from multiple people is needed to go into world and level design alone, not to mention gameplay and storytelling. But I do think if Ukulele and Ahead in Time are successful at capturing that magic we once saw, there is a huge opportunity for the 3D platform to come back in new and exciting ways. But how can these games find that footing to achieve what's needed? Well, to get there, I think it's important to discuss why the genre was initially successful and how it died off to see where it can go in the future. It's important to lay out exactly what I mean by 3D platformer. You might have a different definition, but for the purpose of this discussion, what I mean when I say 3D platformer is a game that requires progression through collecting a certain number of specific items to unlock new pathways in an explorable 3D world, sometimes known as a collectathon. Much like there currently is open world being shoehorned into every single game today, or RPG elements were a hot sales ticket a few years ago, platforming was a means to attract customers to a game. So while there are platforming in some action games like Shadow Man or Ratchet and Clank, they aren't necessarily 3D platformers by the definition I'm using here. While big expensive worlds were available before the inception of Super Mario 64, with games such as Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, and The Legend of Zelda, it was the first to open a fully 3D world to run and jump around in at mostly the player's leisure. Of course there were gated areas accessible only after collecting a certain amount of stars, but there was enough of Peach's castle and courtyard unlocked from the get-go to satisfy the early expectations of exploration. As more and more developers caught onto the trend of collectathons, there was a bigger push to try new things, with Spyro's flying mechanics, Donkey Kong multiple playable characters, even Jack and Dexter put vehicles in the mix. Collectathon stayed strong all through the 5th gen, and even the 6th with Jack and Dexter and Super Mario Sunshine. But, as technology evolved, so did the ideas developers could now cook up. There was a progression seen in the idea of an open world with collectibles, but the platforming had gotten lost in the process. Grand Theft Auto 3 presented a huge sandbox that offered a playground of destruction like nothing we'd seen before. As the series grew with Vice City and San Andreas, so did the hungry desire for more games like it. Jack and Dexter ditched their efforts of a pure platformer in their second title, incorporating the stylings of GTA into its world to move away from the past and evolve with the ever-changing industry. As open world sans platforming became more and more desirable by players, 3D platformers slowly faded away into nostalgic memories. Mario continued to carry the torch with the Galaxy series, but that felt less like what we once knew and just a perspective shift from classic 2D games to linear 3D levels with hub sections. Don't get me wrong, these are fantastic experiences on their own, but don't feel like the full 3D platformer experience that once was. Big shiny worlds that offer progression through, surprise surprise, collection, is the crux of the 3D platformer. It fills the deepest desire to find every nook and cranny in a world to get all those little secrets. But unfortunately, this alone won't fly if there's to be a resurgence. Nostalgia can only carry an idea so far before it feels stale, and I don't think amplifying what existed in the past is the answer either. The industry is already oversaturated with big worlds with nothing to do in them. Even with collectibles, solid level design needs to be at the forefront. Developers need to learn from the success stories of the 2D platforming comeback, borrowing from all the genres and breakout games that came and went. As these worlds have the ability to become bigger than we could ever imagine back in the 90s, developers need to make sure players don't get overwhelmed and lost. Since older games were limited by technology, 
Sectioning off worlds made the process of keeping players focused a lot easier. Using minimaps, screen clutter, and other overused techniques seen in current open world games would distract from what the heart of these games originally stood for. Instead, they would need to look at using very clear cut landmarks, eye catching details, and even musical changes across maps to keep players on track. While not all original 3D platformers were on the Nintendo 64, it's an easy association to make with the genre, and it's no secret that the controller was not great for what the games tried to accomplish. Namely the jank camera control, trying to navigate a 3D space with only one stick didn't lend itself to the most friendly of world navigation, and while some other later counterparts had twin sticks for extra camera maneuverability, there was never a perfect realisation of a camera in a 3D platformer. Although controller and camera technology hasn't advanced too much since the tail end of the last era of the genre, let's hope current and future developers learn from the small missteps of the past to not let wonky cameras ruin what could be overall good experiences. One thing that held the genre back was being on the front lines of the mascot wars, forcing each game to be a console exclusive. As indies are picking up the long lost pieces, those shackles can be done away with for multiple console and even PC experiences. But where should 3D platformers go from here if it's to thrive? While Ukulele uses Banjo-Kazooie as a crutch to lean on pretty hard, it's still bringing something interesting with its pages currency. As stated in the Kickstarter campaign, new islands containing advanced features and challenges will become available once you've decided to hand your pages over to the world building construction crew. If you desire, world expansion can be ignored entirely, and you can hop, skip, and roll your way through the standard worlds towards the final boss lurking in his or her mighty keep. Even if the rest of the game feels a little too similar in movement, music, and character design, this optional world expansion idea will set it apart and potentially give each player a unique take on what they want from the game, continuing to build upon what Banjo-Tooie laid out back in the year 2000, with its intertwining level design. Ahead in Time doesn't look to be doing anything specifically new, but it is filling a missing niche by hitting all the cornerstones of a 3D platformer, with interesting worlds, items to collect, and fun character designs, but with updated graphics. For it to succeed, it needs to introduce some unique mechanics, or some truly different levels. And from the latest trailer as of this video, the DJ world seems to hit that pretty well. But what about after these two? If no one switches up the formula like we saw with some 2D platformers, the collectathons are in danger of being left dead in the water again. With longer and more expensive development cycles, it'll be harder to push games, and no one will want to run the risk of developing a game that people have already lost interest in. While the 3D platformer never officially went away after its inception, it certainly hasn't retained popularity like during the beginnings of the polygonal era. But with two high profile titles on the horizon, there's a resurgence set in motion, and I personally hope that momentum can be kept up over many years to come. Hey, this is not something I've done before, but as I probably put somewhere in this video that there is a channel update and that update is I'm launching Patreon. Um, it's nothing, nothing too exciting. Sorry. But yeah, if you want to support the channel, completely optional up to you, whatever. I'm not really doing tiers. Um, there's one, one tier, it's $1. Um, you get a playlist of videos. I like players, the music I've been listening to ideas that are coming up for the channel, shit like that. Yeah.